Now once again when we talk about getting the full packet, so this is what is called sniffing in which a computer is actually eavesdropping into all packets which are flowing in its same broadcast domain. By broadcast domain I actually mean the ethernet domain in which all computers are connected together and are contending with each other basically to send packets. And as far as sending the arbitrary packets or packet injection is concerned, so this is actually used by many security tools as well but also by DOS tools. What is done here is that we manufacture our own packets, we make our own packets complete with all the headers, the ethernet header, the IP header, the TCP header, the data and then we actually send out these packets directly into the network. So you can imagine the strength. As an example, you could modify the source IP address. Normally when a packet goes out on the medium, the source IP would be of the host computer which is sending out that packet. But with raw sockets, you could change all that, manufacture your own packet, put arbitrary source IP addresses, destination addresses, source ports, etc. And then send out the packets onto the network and the kernel would not stop you at all. So we can imagine that this is basically an absolute power mode in which the network stack is totally bypassed. Now let's have a quick look at what raw sockets actually do. So as we've discussed that once a packet comes in to the network card driver, the driver passes it up basically to the protocol family. But depending upon what that uh, uh, packet actually contains, then you know the IP layer, then the TCP layer, the socket interface and finally to the user land application. This was the first example in which we saw that a packet comes in and is pushed up the layer and in every layer some header or the other is being stripped out. Now what does raw socket, how do raw sockets actually work? So in Linux using packet filters what we can do is that as soon as a packet comes in into the device from the network driver itself at that time itself we can punt it directly to the application by bypassing all these steps. So what happens is at this point as we can remember the packet is still with full with all the headers the ethernet header ip header tcp header etc and at this state itself the packet is sent out to the raw socket to which an application is subscribing this would be your sniffer program which would actually be listening into all these packets so this is how raw sockets actually work so now simply put raw sockets basically provide a way of bypassing the whole network stack traversal of a packet and delivering it directly to an application. There are many ways to create raw sockets but currently we will just concentrate on the pf underscore packet interface. Things would be clearer once we go ahead with the programming examples. So now what is the pf underscore packet interface? It is nothing but a software interface which allows us to send and receive packets at the layer 2 which is nothing but the device driver. So our interaction now is with the device driver itself. We receive packets directly from the driver and send packets directly to the driver bypassing the whole network stack of the computer. As we've already discussed because of this all packets which we receive would be totally full with all the headers and we can transmit arbitrary packets with RB headers onto the network. Now also some sort of a filtering is supported on the pf underscore packet software interface uh, using Berkeley packet filters. We'll discuss about this a little later. Keep that aside for now so that we do not complicate things. So now the big question how to create a raw socket. Creation is very easy. It's just the same socket call but with the first argument that is family to be pf underscore packet and then the type to be sock underscore raw these two would be fixed and finally the protocol field of the socket call right would depend upon which protocol we want to receive packets of or send packets of for ip networks it's normally eth underscore p underscore ip uh, the small typo here to receive all types actually it's basically eth underscore p underscore all it's not ip it's a small typo so now uh, let's go into how a sniffer is made. As you've discussed a sniffer is a program which is going to receive all packets which the network card can see and then extract some meaningful information out of it. So how is a sniffer actually made? 
the first step is to create a raw socket using the socket call and uh, you know before this or even after this we can put the interface on promiscuous mode either programmatically or by using the if config command after that we would bind on the interface from which we want to receive the raw sockets raw packets uh, let's say you know we have the eth0 interface then we would bind to that interface then we would start receiving packets from that socket using the receive from call as we do for udp and then finally we would go ahead process those packets look at the headers look at the data maybe store something out of it and then finally once we are done we close the raw socket so this is how a sniffer is made we we'll look into code a little later but this is a brief overview of how it's done let's now look at a packet injector the functionality of a packet injector almost is the same apart from just the fact that after the socket call and the bind call instead of using a receive from we do a send to because we have to send the packet out now of course this packet we would have to create by ourselves we would have to create all the headers the ethernet header ip header tcp header or udp header then finally the data put them all together and then send that packet out onto the network finally once we are done we close that socket so uh, this is all about the basics uh, raw sockets is such a topic that too much of theory would actually lead to more confusion so let's start off with a very simple example now please follow the next uh, video in this section thank you